Yeah, so apparently that's, you know, I don't know if the board's going to be disappointed or not. You know, I got I, I actually pulled up a YouTube video. I'm going to watch it here in a little bit about what exactly the Euro Cup 2 is, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, hey, ho hold on. I'm getting a call from the office. I'll call you back. Luca. Yes, sir. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, I was looking... Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, doing some research right now. You know, where we might travel and all that kind of stuff. Definitely understand the competition. Yeah. What do you mean? We're not going? What? <laughs> so imagine my surprise... But I'm trying to figure out what this Euro Cup 2 thing is and when the draw is and, you know, so we can start scheduling friendlies in the preseason and so on. And I get a little thing in my inbox that says Roma have been disqualified from continental competition because of financial rules. Hmm. Sounds vaguely familiar to something happening in the Premier League. I don't know if they can appeal. They haven't. Or if they did, they lost because my friends. What I haven't even looked at the table. I have not prepared for this whatsoever. Oh, it still shows that they are in the spot, and they're not. They are gone. They're not allowed to be in it. We, if you go to our competitions, we are in the Europa League, my friends. We are in the Europa League and the Italian Youth Club Invitational. What is that? No one knows. I'm bringing you back. We do have... I'm going to go back and look at the end-of-season awards and all that stuff. We've made some transfers, my friends. But I want to show you the draw. Primarily so that I can play the next game because I'm playing right now and relaxing. Had a little something-something. Um, I, I, I was like, wait, what? So, like, apparently Roma in financial straits... Or, or maybe I guess it was financial fair play and they didn't... Whatever. It doesn't matter. We're in the Europa League, which is bizarro world. So let's let's go ahead and do the draw. Um, where do we find ourselves? Probably fourth seed? Yes, but we're not the last fourth seed, my friends. Because we made it to the knockout stage. So we're ahead of <laughs> that we beat last season. Uh, and uh, Trabzonspor and Charleroi. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Just, just draw all the teams. Okay, that's um, Swiss Club, Lokomotiv Moscow, and Salzburg. You know, could have been worse. Could have been better. Could have been worse. Like, we don't have Man United, so that's a good thing, I guess. We don't have Wolfsburg. That's a good thing. I'm not actually sure how good Salzburg and Moscow are. And we don't have Lazio and Chelsea. This would be a bad group to be in. So, we've avoided that. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the end of season awards now. Yay! This is weird. I, I've literally, I mean, it's not like I've been playing football manager for like a decade, but I've never had my team get into a competition because another team didn't make financial fair play. First things, it, wait, you learn something new. You know what I'm trying I should relax more often. <laughs> All right, my friends, it's the end of season awards. We've gone back. I still, I still can't believe... I can't believe Roma. I cannot believe due to, I think it's financial for play that they're out. That it's bizarro world. All right. End of season awards. Uh, overall best 11. Theo gets added as well as Maximiliano. But where is he? Is he a sub? He's a sub. Interesting. I do think it's, you know, because they have to be here a certain number of years, right? You can't be like a one-season wonder. But you got Ida and Cassie up top. Romano still there. Rossi, Haas, Labuti, Theo, Dosenia, Andresen, Vipes, and Zwolfs, my friends. Very, very interesting. Favelli still on the backup. Scapini still on the backup. Oh, he's done with football. Sad days. Brosco still playing? No, he's done. Venturi still kicking around. FC Messina. I'm just, I'm kind of curious, 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 Romano listed, playing for Benevento, Benevento, yes, listed for 110k, 
I'd say that it did not get good value there, my friends. Good grief. Eight substitute appearances. A ninth substitute appearance the next year, and you paid 350 grand for him, and you're paid him 4.9k a week. Goodness. Um, I know that's random. All right. We just took a look at that, so we don't need to look at the screen. End of season awards. Cassidy with the sweep. I'm surprised. I am. I mean, I'm surprised it's that high, right? Like, you know, if it was closer, but wow. Cassidy, 48%. Jalo and Haas way behind. Signing of the season because we go to Moto Free, lads. And young player of the season. That, I, that is I, still, still. I think Adam Ida is going like, hello? I mean, I, I guess that's the average rating. But he did score 70 goals and he had one more assist. Like, the fact that he's not even in the top three, it's like, hello? Uh, hello? Um is it's just surprising to me, to be honest with you. Um, let me hop you forward for the commercial summary. All right, commercial summary. You can see it's June 9th at this point because I, I save it ever so often here. Um, three new deals, 975K per year. One new deal worth through 475K for the Waykit sponsor, so it was expiring. They've renewed, and we've charged them almost 25% more. Nice. Corbin and Hospitality up. I mean, it's it's kind of... I'm used to playing it like Cabot to where like you're looking at like, oh, wow, corporate hospitality was up like a big amount, but like none of this matters. So look at the broadcast revenues up, you know, 20 million. I mean, I know we had the Europa League. That definitely plays a part, but like even the, the Serie A um, broadcast revenues are rising. Like in the upcoming season, we're going to make 50 million from that. And like our first season in Serie A, it was 39 million. I don't know. Like it's crazy. It's the ESPN plus. Hello. Match day commercial up. Machoy Ida with the number 30. I love that. You know, Cassidy has taken the 11. That's interesting. Kind of sad. Uh, Coot with the 10. Haas with the 15. I just think that's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, my friends. Um, wait, 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 wait. Where's the... Because it says we've qualified... Hold on. There was a, there wasn't, I want to show you the news item because I've never had this. There it is. They failed to gain a license for the competition due to financial reasons, which I'm assuming is financial fair play, but I've never seen that. So it is a thing. I'm, I, I'm not using the editor. Like I've literally never seen that happen. I didn't know. I, I guess I knew it was possible, right? There are rules, but it's never, I've never gotten it in thing in my inbox because of it. Interesting. All right, my friends, so I've hopped us forward. It's already September 1st. We've played a whopping three games. You can tell we are currently in fourth on five points. Undefeated, two draws. We've changed our system. You're like, who's that guy with the highest average rating? Well, my friends, let me tell you. So we've not completely changed the system. Um, I do want to explore what having two players on the wings on each side could do. But I didn't want to get rid of the three center backs. I like the I like that shape, like the five at the back, and then whatever you want to do, whether it's three midfielders and two strikers, or the two midfielders and the one and the two, you know, sorting that out. Until my friends, until I came across this guy, twenty-one year old Ivorian Hoinger. He wanted me to play him on the attacking midfield left role as a winger. Look, I mean, just, I mean, we're paying him 56, 57 grand. I don't know why I said 56, 57 grand a week. In preseason, granted, preseason, I understand, but he scored seven goals, had five assists on a 925 in five games. Ho, 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 holy cow. He scored two goals. He scored two goals in our three actual games on a 757. 15 acceleration and pace, 16 stamina and agility. Balance is insane. Jumping reach is crazy. Natural fitness. Not as strong. That's all right, man. Determined. Spirited. Three goalkeeper rating. You always look for that. Runs with the ball down the left. He's got 15 dribbling. Knocks ball past the opponent. We'll take it. Oh, he could someday be a complete wingback <laughs> if he gets old, you know? But I was like, oh, he's a good He's a You know where we got him? Roma. Roma with their financial problems, getting knocked out of Europa League spots, had essentially, we'll have to check, had like a fire sale. 8.25 million, I felt like, I, I feel like is a steal. I mean, he's only worth 9.5, but 8.25 for these 
attributes? You tell me. I think it's a steal. Now, he's a non-EU player, so we are maxed out on non-EU players, and that means I can't get anybody from England or Scotland or Northern Ireland where I do all my scouting. We got we to gotta work through that, but he was, he was too good to pass up at, at that value to me. I think he's going to be worth a lot more in the future. He's 21. He has a 40 million euro minimum fee release clause only to clubs in the Champions League. And if we get relegated, 21 million. So like one way or another, we're making money on this kid. Now we have we have somewhat broken our wage budget, but you already saw that in the previous episode, so that shouldn't shock you. Let's go look at the others. Oh my goodness, people have been coming in for Theo. He's been like, nah, I don't want to go. I'm like, good, because I'm not selling you. Hello. Um, teams want Giraud, and I was like, no, no, he's gonna be our backup right winger slash something in the midfield. We have spent, my friends, just the 8.25 million, but notice here. We sold Zuls. Here's my thinking on this. I looked. Juventus got rid of their keeper. They literally have like a 19 or 20 year old. Like not very good. He's worth 3.7 million. And they came. They they inquired. And I was like, all right. All right. You want to overpay? Anytime you can cause your rival to overpay your rival you know, a team at the top, right, to overpay. Now, you could argue 7 million rising to 8 million, and the 8 million is like if he gets to 20 league appearances, and he's their starting keeper, so we should get that. Is a pittance to the like of Juventus. Fair. That's completely fair. However, however, if you look at last season, okay, you look at, oh, he's the back breakup? Who is the starter? Okay, we'll take a look at, wait, 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 wait. As the backup, he started three times. They just paid him backup wages, I guess. Um, playing for us last season, conceded 51, only seven clean sheets compared to 10 the season before, seven the season before that. Again, like, it's not like he was playing bad, you know? Like, I wasn't, like, mad about it, you know? Like, I was I was all right with him. He was a good player. However, he was on, like, 20 grand a week. And his contract with us was like until 2028, 2029. And it was kind of one of those things like when I gave him that contract, it was a long term like, but his physicals, I felt like as he ages are going to get worse. Now he's a really good, like he's much better, I think, just straight goalkeeper versus a sweeper keeper. And we've been using him as a sweeper keeper, right? All that to say, I was like, you know what? To get a rival to overpay, you could say like three or four million is not a whole lot of overpaying, right? But like we still get them to overpay. He's worth 5.75. They paid a 7, rising to 8. Okay? He's 17 starts away from us getting an extra mil. Who is that? There's no way they have another goalkeeper. Yeah, they had this 20-year-old. That's not your starting. So they don't have... I don't, well, I don't know what the deal is that. I guess they just didn't want to pay him his wages. Or, like, pay him, like, starting wages, right? I just thought, you know, like, can we upgrade? Um, or... Can we be that club? Can we kind of be the Ajax where, like, we bring youth players in and we grow them and we sell them on, right? All that to say, um, Gustav is not that far off. I'm not saying he's amazing, but he's 20, okay? So, he's our starter. Now, he's only got one clean sheet and three. Eh, conceded four. Eh, right? But that's about on par... <laughs> I mean, if we had a clean sheet every three games, we would have more than, we'd have like 12 this season. Again, you're not going to extrapolate off three games. But I'm just saying, I think with his potential, it was one of those things where it's like, I didn't want this kid to sit on our bench forever. I was thinking this year before Juventus came in that we were going to start transitioning. Like, Bergen would get the cup games in some of like, probably like the lower um, table teams in Serie A. And Zuls was going to get the Europa League and the higher teams because, you know, but then like, we're going to start that odd transition where it's like, okay, there's a competition here. He's taking your job. And then they came in and I was like, you know what? We could just use this kid. Um, he's got a relegation release clause. He doesn't have a buyout clause outside of that. He's on lower wages than Zwolf's. I think it was a good deal. Uh, and I think if we give him a full slate of games this season, that credibility is going to rise because he's so young. Um, which means our backup is an 18 year old Ferranti, but kind of the same thing, right? If this kid actually has, actually, who knows, 
three and a half star potential. Can we get him a game every so often? He's in the senior team. He's getting mentoring. He's around to where he could be good. I'm not as worried now. If he, if, you know, if uh, Bergeron goes down with an injury, we're probably in a bad spot, and we're buying somebody in January. Fair, absolutely fair. Um, but also, selling Zuls allowed us to buy this amazing winger, right? Like, not that we needed to worry about the finances of the deal, but it didn't hurt, right? Um, we've loaned out Santa uh, one, uh, Francesco Santagata who is a pretty good actually right back, but he, we offered him like he was old enough to go professional. We offered him a professional contract. He's resolute. He wanted to be loaned. And so we said, sure. And so this team loaned him. It's like they pay full wages if he pay plays and none if he doesn't, which is kind of the backwards, but you know, our loan manager was like, Hey, you've got him on the loan list. So I accept it. I was like, cool. We loaned out Labuti for a, they're paying. What are they paying? Yeah. They're paying full wages and an extra grand. My friends a month. He just wasn't going to play. He's going to run down his contract. We got him listed. Nobody wants him. So we're making 12 grand or less off of this, but he's not costing us anything in wages. Um, we have loaned out, and I was a little hesitant on this, but I've loaned Rampanini to Pro Vercelli because we got them to agree. You can't hide jersey number. We got them to agree to regular starter minutes. And last season, he got... Seven starts, 11 subs. Not bad for 20, but I don't want to slow down his development from not getting... Like, I want him to get 30 games a season. And I wasn't sure he was going to get that with us. So, it's he's good. Like, we're not planning on getting rid of him. He's got a long-term contract. They're paying his wages. I'm, I'm good with it. It's a little bit of a risk, but what it allows us to do is play Icardi more. Um, and Icardi is not going to be whining about playing time and it's not going to impact him if we don't play him as much. So it's essentially like if Icardi gets seven starts and 11 subs a season instead of Rampanini, that's, that's fine. So, so that Rampanini can go get all of the game time in Serie Bay. So they're in the league boss and not a Serie C team. I've loaned out uh, Baltodano, which is the American question mark. He still has, Oh, I thought it was lower than that. 1,320. It's going to be a while before he's a non-EU player for us, I think. Again, haven't seen your comments on it, but right. But professional Lupo Roma, City of Chi team, who just got promoted from City of Day. So opportunity for him to go and make a name for himself in the striker role. So we'll see how he does. And then Graziano Balani, um, who's a center back of ill repute and low self-belief who we've loaned out for nothing just so he's away from the team <laughs> that's really that's really what happened there so i'm kind of nervous to see your thoughts here because i i wanted to spend some more money but i, I i'm not the kind of player in football manager that goes like let's just go spend all the money just because right like we still have 17 million in budget okay um, and we still have 140 grand in wage budget, but I, I'd rather keep our dynamics good and build up the squad. Okay. High turnover playing staff. There's only many players I'm with the team for different lengths of time. Yeah, that's fine. High turnover of playing staff. Okay. I thought that was staff members. You mean players? It's, I, I don't think we've had that much. Tom Schradel is a little upset, but we we he's got two subs. Like we're I'm I'm determined. I know Tom is not up to stuff. Sorry, Tom. Um, one and a half star, but like we're playing him this year. Come on, Tom, let's go. Um, so all that to say, we've gone. I'm calling this a three four three, but you could call it a five two three wide if you want. We obviously leave the middle of the pitch open, which is not great, but it's kind of worked. I mean, really, it has. It's kind of worked. This is not our normal starting 11. This is coming up for the friendly in a couple days. Usually we have Ida. We do play um, uh, Coot out here, actually. He, he's done pretty well. Tyrese slots anywhere along here. Works just nicely. Paul Colombani covers here or here. Again, hasn't started, but, like, we're working on it. Um, this is Bolin is getting some game time. And by some game time, I mean a sub. Um, so Theo is usually here. Grandi is here. He's now an, always oh, a yellow dot. It wasn't orange dot. It's a yellow dot. He actually knows something about the role now, which is good. Um, this has been Haas. This has been Jalo. Um, Mateus is only playing here because I'm not playing with a DM right now and I don't have an extra center back. So usually this is whatever, um, 
Andreessen and Vipes and Cooper, right? And then obviously Ferranti is not our starting goalkeeper. But with that being said, my friends, we drew, came back 94th minute, set piece, comes in, Vipes smashes it home with his foot, goes over everybody. It was kind of nice to come back because we were down. It was three to one. It was ugly. Kind of ugly. It's it's so depressing with like when they've got really good players and they just look like professionals and you're like, wow, we don't do anything like that in our highlights. Um, then we smashed Udinese 3 0. Coot getting a goal. Surge. Is it Surge? You let me know in the comments so I can mispronounce it for the next couple episodes while I'm recording and then we'll eventually fix it. Um, Surge Kaoku. Um, Ida with another goal. So I Haas with a brace. Ida with a goal. Coot with a goal, Surge with a goal, and then here, kind of disappointing. Once again, the early goal drives me crazy. Surge gets his second goal, so doing quite well. Um, next episode, my friends, we're going to come back, and it's going to be Lokomotiv Moscow and probably... It may just be Europa League. Like, I kind of want to do the Europa... I, like, it's not that the league's not important. We're still expected to be 16th. I... They're not paying attention, apparently. Um, and it's not that the league is not important, but, like, I also don't want to have 10 episodes a season, and I don't want to ignore the big competition here and then the Coppa Italia. So it's probably for a little bit going to be, you know, the Europa League until we see what happens. Um, and then we'll take it from there. Obviously, the Coppa Italia, Udinese, or uh, Genoa CFC. That's actually – okay, that's the same one. I guess I missed the CFC part. Um that's them, right? That's interesting because it doesn't... Why does it show here but not here? Anyway, football manager things. Let me know what you think. That's the big news. We sold our goalkeeper and we bought a winger with the money. And we still got a lot of money to spend. But I, again, if you look at the squad... Okay. If you look at the sub squad because they're reversed right now. First team is sitting on the bench. I'm quite, like, I'm quite happy with the stars, right? Like, quite happy with us. Um... I do think our bench is a little light, but I think it goes back to, like, I want to get Francesco more time. I want to get Wim Bullen more time. I want to get Pascal more time. Lucese more time, right? Like, to give them op opportunity to reach that potential, they've got to play. So, we make some moves and shifts. We'll see how it works out, and we will see you for the Europa League. Hit that like button. See you then! Oh, I don't know if I said this already in this episode. If you're interested in buying a mug or t-shirt that's down there check out the link below for my teespring shop um i make about five or six bucks on an item if you want to you know have I and mean, i'm always open to your suggestions i've gotten some suggestions on like hey could you do a you know ghg on the back with the year like 20 like a like a like a kit number taking a look at that trying to see what i can do from a design standpoint or you can just go to patreon.com slash gray gaming thanks for your support it means a ton see ya